morning, gang. We are expecting a heavy, heavy snowstorm, so I'm out early. I wanna get some stuff done. Let's do it. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Use your outside voice? Well, we're getting close. Very, very close. There's the Seattle Eye, that Ferris wheel right there. So where we're headed to now is one of Seattle's oldest shops and it's family run, full of curiosities. Nope, we're not taking a ferry, sorry. So before I got here, I totally intended on going up in the Space Needle until I went to the Museum of Pop Culture and saw that they sold tickets there and I saw the price was $60 and I go, $60 to go up in the Space Needle? And she said, well that's for two times in 24 hours. It's actually like 45 for just one. And I was like, $45 for something that's shorter than the Eiffel Tower? And the Eiffel Tower I paid like $18 or not even. Just the value just wasn't there for videos for me. I just couldn't see paying 45, almost $50 just to go up in a tower in an elevator and come back down. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that this trip. Take a look at that view out there. Ivar feeding the seagulls. You can see the restaurant here in front of it. It's called Ivar's. It's kind of cool. Aha, we are close. Well, just follow the totem poles. There is our stop for today. Ye old curiosity shop. Oh, nice. Right here is, you get ready to enter, you see this guy. Wow, as soon as you walk in, there's stuff to look at everywhere. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. That's an ancient warrior shield from the Philippines. Look at this guy. And that is an English village made out of cork. Spinning globes. Wow, look at all that. I love this kind of stuff. They even sell shrunken heads here in various sizes. Oh man, this is just too cool. Look at the bat. Yeah, check out Medical Ed. Ooh, more than a hundred years old, can be opened like a box, is an anatomical preparation, helped medical students learn anatomy and was created before x-rays were invented. Made from a real human head and skin, it says. Weird, but pretty interesting. There you go, shrunken heads in every size. Hello. Optician trade sign. That's cool. Ooh, is that a walrus? This big thing right here is a whale sheath. Big, bigger, biggest. Whoa. What the devil's going on in here? Looks like a party. Wow, look at all these. A bunny dove? You ever seen a bunny dove? I haven't. Oh, those are like snake heads. Look at those. Whoa. This place is amazing. Bigfoot coffee. Just in case you need to take a Bigfoot home. They have a little bit of everything here. Like your average porcupine fish. What is that? Holy Christmas. Old man of the sea. I love this kind of stuff. The old tester love machine. Ooh, nautical compass. Says old Tobago Bill, as he was known in the last half of the 18th century, was the most feared shark in the world. Measuring over 35 feet long, he terrorized the waters off Panama until he met his end. Is that his mouth? Inside that jar it says this is a record sized geo duck. 10 pounds. 
the flying goddess. Here we have Estrella's prophecies. If you dare. Here is a two-headed bull calf. Take a look at that. That's crazy. You can see the faces in there. This says this is a four-legged hen from England. It's a relative success in the world of poultry. Reared by Mr. S. Earl, a butcher in Steinig. This fine hen lived a long and happy life of seven years. She was known to have laid several eggs Though her extra legs were usually no trouble to her, they eventually led to her demise in 1908 when they became entangled in the wire netting of her enclosure. Yep, four legs. What do you think? You ever feel like you're being watched? I do. Well, this is Jolly Jack. Let's put a quarter in the slot and see if he laughs. He's smoking a cigarette and he's got a fly on his nose. I'm curious about this. <laughs> that is creepy as all get out, but it's funny. He's really getting into it. <laughs> Keep going for a quarter, baby. Keep laughing. I want my money's worth. Oh, that's cool. A tugboat made of matchsticks. That is pretty rad. Here we have one of those old naughty scenes from the 1920s. Put your 10 cents in there and put your peepers in there. Oh, she's getting out of the bath. Uh-oh. Now here we have a mummy named Sylvester, and it says Sylvester's story is that he was a cowpoke who got drunk and passed out in Arizona sun and dried out, and his uh, skin turned into basically looking like a raisin. Look at him, jeez. And it says on here, this was one of the mummies that people believed was the uh, John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that's kind of cool. There's Chief Seattle's hat right there. And then a medicine man figure up there. There's the only known photo of Chief Seattle with that same type of hat on his lap, see? Now right up here you see an Australian duckbill platypus right there. And then above him, that says that is the Nubian vulture the largest vulture in Africa. Whoa. Now this mummy right here is a female they named Sylvia, and it says that Sylvia has been here in the shop since the 1960s, and what they believe is that she uh, was an immigrant from Spain who came to the New World in the first part of the 1800s. She died in her early 30s, probably of tuberculosis, and was laid to rest in the highlands of Central America says the intense dry cold or the intense cold dry air caused her body to dry out so thoroughly that she's only five feet tall and weighs only 20 pounds wow well i guess i can see how that would happen and then down here it says the little mummy is gloria little baby And there's a skull with an arrowhead sticking out of it. Human head. Secured by the Rockefeller Expedition. New Guinea, wow. And there's a cannibal fork. Look at those shrunken heads right there, jeez. Slave bracelets back there it says from the Philippines, right there. Boar's tooth armband. It says this is the smallest shrunken head in the world, extremely rare. 
But what's weird is it looks like that one's bigger than this one. And that one says, that one's a very rare shrunken head from Ecuador. Then there's one with like kind of an afro look. Still got her hair. And then this necklace it says is a bean and tooth necklace. That orange, orange one right there. Weird. Now whatever those things are, they're made out of human hair. There's another shrunken head and then there's actually a torso. Shrunken torso. Man, all kinds of weird curiosities in here, huh? And then the spiritual gable mask, it says. And this little pole right here is actually a blowgun used by hunters, head hunters. Look how long that is. There's an owl. We got a mouflon sheep up there. And then a monstrous tortoise right there. And then it says this is a case of mementos from the founder. Joseph Edward Daddy Stanley, 1854 to 1940, and it's all his belongings, and it says that he came here from Steubenville, Ohio. He said he read a, read a book about this kind of stuff, and he said he thought about nothing else. So he got to Seattle in the turn of the 20th century, he dropped the grocery business he'd opened in Denver, and began to indulge his mania for collecting full time said he could talk to anybody about anything. The family never knew just who would show up for dinner at Totem Place, <laughs> the home he built in West Seattle. From armless billiard champion George Sutton to museum director George Hay. Daddy was once asked how he managed to live so long in such good health. He owned it and said, uh, to the view from his home is what kept him living long. That's pretty cool. That's a nest of tarantulas, or for nest for tarantulas, it said. There he is. There's some of his spectacles. There's a kamikaze flag. It says normally they would have been destroyed and this one survived. Wow, that's kind of cool to see. Interesting. I think I'll skip the wine. A wolf eel? Are you kidding me? Never even heard of it. Whoa. Now this says this is a puffer fish lantern. Oh, look at him up there. Here we've got another lantern made out of a bigger puffer fish. Now look above that big Alaskan king crab up there. It says, it takes five years from a king crab to grow its full size. Wow. Oh, patches. They really have pretty much everything here, even amber jewelry. Look at these glasses. Nice. Back there it says that is a 67 pound snail. Jeez. Leg bone from a mammoth. Alien skull. And much like Archie McVee's, they have a surprise chest right there. You buy a package and you never know what could be in there. Petrified fish from Badlands. Wow, look at that. It's a giant crab from the China Sea. That's about three times the size of the king crab. Wow. Oh, that's kind of cool. It says, spurs worn by Pancho Villa, notorious Mexican revolutionary. I did some Pancho Villa talk when I went to the, um, Texas. Now this says that these are saddlebags said to belong to a notorious outlaw youngster who rode with Jesse James. <laughs> If you look above this safe right here, you see a badger in this case that was shot in 1869. Oh, look at that guy hiding up there. Yeah, this place is just totally, totally amazing. <laughs> that is a World War I canteen, and right next to it is a Chinese beheading sword. Looks like basically a machete right at the end of that big broomstick. That's actually pretty funny. Those are fanny packs that some have six pack abs and some have uh, 
dad's stomach. Yep, I think I'm gonna buy a few postcards and we're gonna head out of here. You know, get the standard. All oh, these are pretty cool. See it says bear claws, and they literally look like bear claws with almonds for fingernails. Little snack. Those are Siamese calf up there. Gross sandwich bags. Sandwich bags look like they have a mold on them. They just turn the player piano on. He's at it again. And if you're the kind of person that collects gemstones, this is for you. Take a look at Mini World. Little mini gun up there. Figures from a hinged walnut from Mexico. That's what that is. Whale painting on a head pin, jeez. Wow, some crazy stuff. Miniature decks of cards. Whoa, you can buy your own shark in a bottle here. That is wacky. And check this out, you can get all these little uh, hand crank music boxes, but you can actually pay to make your own. Look at that, make your own music box. You can do uh, Farrah Jaca, Old MacDonald, How to Farm, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and Ten Little Soldiers. Huh, they have all kinds. Oh, you can get Imagine, Stairway to Heaven. Some pretty good options. Here comes the sun, Yellow Submarine. That's a great sleep mask. <laughs> Man, you just think you've seen everything and you haven't. Not till you get to this place. And a whole wall full of framed butterflies. Whoa, Bob Ross mints. And Mr. Rogers. You know, in Hollywood, you always see these like fake licenses and stuff, so I never really even take a second look, even though there's Kurt Cobain one. But what made me start laughing was when I saw Time Traveler, <laughs> Time Traveler license. Oh, and Rick and Morty as well. Oh, yep, gotta have a Squatch Research Team badge. Whoa. Well, Casino Machine Partner, I'm gonna back away real, real slow like, and we're gonna head out of here and we don't want no trouble. Put the gun down. Actually, why don't we throw a quarter in him and see what happens. I got a token of some sort. So what did that crazy gambling machine give me for my quarter? A ye old curiosity shop token. Fair trade, I'm happy. Oh yeah, this place was totally worth it. Now we're gonna head out of here and we're gonna go to a place called Gasland Park. Check this out. Eight and a half year old burrito unicorn missing. His name is Pablo, we really miss him. So where we're going is actually called Gas Works Park. It's been kind of nice hanging out in Seattle because I have friends that live here now, so I've been able to catch up with them. A lot of them I haven't seen for about five years since they moved from LA. I don't have one where I live, so I had to come see it here. So check this out. This is a public park that is on the land of a former Seattle Gas and Light Company plant, gasification plant. Wicked weird and pretty awesome. I love stuff like this out of the ordinary. And it is a total Seattle hotspot. Everybody comes here. You can see over there, it's kind of these winding little hiking trails that people are going up right now. And one of the real highlights to this place is that you just get this fantastic view of the city from here. Perfect for picnics and walks and dogs named Jaw that would have enjoyed this. There you can see the Space Needle.
Take a look at Seattle. I'm just gonna take the same winding trail that's already laid out, go down here and then back up. The weather since I've been here has not been too bad, but tomorrow it is supposed to pretty much avalanche. They said for the next couple days it's supposed to get bad, so I might cut my trip a little short. Yeah, I might try and change my plane ticket and go back a little bit early. So here's the very top. Huh. Take a look at that. Pretty freaking cool. Now we're working our way down. I am wondering about that shopping cart though. Is that art or a practical joke? All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I have some plans in a little bit and uh, yeah, let you guys get back to your life. Have a great day, thank you for watching, and uh, come back and see me tomorrow and see what else Seattle has to offer. Have a great night, and goodbye.